Okay, so you decided you want to email your first potential clients. How do you do that? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to QNArt. My name is Marie and I'm a freelance illustrator and I've been working for about one and a half years. So as I go along and figure stuff out myself, I thought I'd share whatever I find with you so that you guys have a place where you can come back to and hopefully find most of the answers to all the questions that you might have. In this video, I will show you how to approach a client with a cold email, how to find their contact info, how to write that email, and a few tips about proper email etiquette. And if after all this you still don't know what exactly to write in that email, I will provide you with a simple template that you can use. Let's get started. When it comes to finding contact info, most companies will provide them on their website. Companies that we work with and depend on artists a lot, like board game companies, pen and paper companies, they usually provide an art drop email on their website. That's a specific email you can use to just drop your portfolio and it'll reach whoever is in charge of recruiting new artists for that company. So to give you an example, I'll just go to the Fantasy Flight Games website real quick. And this is just a random example, by the way, I haven't worked with them so far. Under more, you'll find freelance opportunities. And here we have an art drop email. Another example would be Chaosium. Um, this is a company I have worked for. Um, contact, submissions, scroll down to art, click here, okay. And they have a contact form that you can just fill out. You might also come across some companies that don't provide a general art drop email, um, but rather the email to the specific art director in charge. Personally, I even prefer this, to be honest, because that way you know exactly who you're addressing. First, I want to tell you some general things to keep in mind when writing a cold email. Generally, you want them to be short, precise, and polite. The best advice I've ever gotten about how to write professional emails is to keep in mind that you are writing an actual person. You're not writing to an automated email or a robot. You're actually addressing someone who has feelings, who might have a bad day that day. You never know. So it's always good to be personable and polite and, and the nicest, kindest person that you could possibly be, basically. That's why I'm always trying to find out who exactly I'm writing to. So when the email on the company website says something like John Smith at gamecompany.com, I will always try to address my email to John Smith. Dear John Smith, good morning, John, you know, something like that. I personally really don't like using general phrases like dear art department or dear art director or to whomever is in charge because ideally you don't just want to get the job, you also want to build a long lasting business relationship and you want to signal the people that you're emailing that you are someone who's fun to work with. So again, if you can go the extra mile and find out who you're writing to, there's, you know, there's nothing to lose. To find out who I might be addressing in my email, usually it's already enough to type into Google something like name of the company and then art director. This will usually pop up some results on some sort of art station or recruiting website or something. Of course, you gotta check if that's still up to date, but most of the time that works already. In cases where I really can't find out who I'm addressing, I would rather write something like good morning, just good morning, without addressing someone specifically or addressing in a general phrase. I personally think it still sounds more friendly than good morning, dear art director. That just sounds weird. Good morning is also a lot more direct. And that leads to my next tip when it comes to writing cold emails. Keep in mind that you're not only writing a human being, you're writing an art director specifically. And honestly, art directors usually are pretty busy people. So you really don't want to waste anybody's time by writing lengthy paragraphs about yourself or what you've been doing or what you want. Be precise. I still want to be perceived as approachable and friendly though. So after I address whoever I'm addressing in the email, I will add a quick, short line 
to bring this to a friendly level. This could be something like, I hope this email finds you well, or I hope you're having a stress-free morning. And obviously you can change this to whatever suits your style of writing and speaking. I personally like to shimmy in just a little small line like that in the beginning because it sets the tone for the rest of the email and I think that's important. You don't want to get off on the wrong foot. Next, I will state my intentions. I would like to inquire about work opportunities for any of your upcoming projects. Or I would like to submit my illustration portfolio for consideration for any upcoming projects. Of course, make this specific to you and English is not my first language, so if any of this sounds grammatically wrong, change it up. <laughs> Next, I will add one or two sentences about why I want to work with them and why I think I would be a good fit. Again, make this short. Don't write endless paragraphs because you're just going to waste their time and it's not going to leave a good impression. So for example, um, if I already know the company, maybe it's a board game company and I've already purchased some of the products and enjoyed them, I could write something like, I'm a big board and card game fan and name of the game especially is an all-time favorite among me and my friends. So I'd be thrilled to be given the opportunity to work with you on similar projects. So you mention something that they did that you enjoy and tell them I would like to work on something similar with you. Or you could write, I'm a huge pen and paper RPG enthusiast and a big fan of the name of the product, aesthetics. So I'd be thrilled to be given the opportunity to work with you. And if you don't know anything in their catalog, then don't lie about it. Just keep it general and don't make something up because that might come and bite you in the ass later. Instead, you can try to find something that links you to their products. That could be the subject matter, the genre, the aesthetics, a specific game or a franchise that they work with. All right, so now you've successfully greeted them. You've also stated your intentions and briefly told them why you would like to work with them. At this point, I usually add more information about myself. On one hand, I want to bring this to a personal level again so that they can get to know me a little bit better, but also you want to add in your credentials or experience that you have collected so far. So I will usually write something like, please allow me to quickly introduce myself. My name is Marie Baumgarten, an illustrator and concept artist from Potsdam, Germany. So far, I have mostly collected experience illustrating for pen and paper RPGs and tabletop board games, both in the fantasy and sci-fi genre. If you already have former clients, I would definitely include them and be like, former clients include company, company, and company. And if you haven't collected any experience yet, don't worry, it's not necessary. Just change the last sentence to maybe I specialize in illustrating fantasy or whatever it is you're doing. Of course, if you add a sentence like that, make sure your portfolio actually reflects that. You don't want to say, I specialize in fantasy and then only have science fiction work in your portfolio. That doesn't make sense. And now it's time to add your links. And when I say links, I mean links. Please link your portfolio. Don't send a PDF with your works or actual like JPEGs or PNGs. Usually that's a lot more inconvenient than just linking to your portfolio website. And when I'm saying portfolio website, I also don't mean that you need a fancy website with your own domain, an ArtStation account, or even Behance or something similar usually is enough. Personally, I recommend ArtStation. I've used this and I've never gotten any complaints. I've even got gotten jobs because people found me on ArtStation. You know, if you can afford your own website and you want to make it like really fancy and nice, of course, go ahead and do that. But if that's something that's just not in the cards for you right now, or just generally you, you, you're not sure if the investment is worth it, then honestly go, go with ArtStation and you're gonna be fine. So I would continue like, if that sounds good to you, here's a link to my portfolio. If the company asks for it specifically, you can also add a CV. If they don't ask for it, I personally wouldn't add it unless it really adds to selling you. In my case, 
it really doesn't. So I never include it unless I am specifically asked for it. At this point, you could also add links to your social media profiles. I sometimes do this because I don't only paint the way that I do um, in my portfolio, but I also draw in a stylized like comic style sometimes. And sometimes I feel like maybe the client or the company utilizes different styles in projects and it would give me a plus point if they knew that I'm versatile enough to work in different styles. But this also really depends on if you have different styles that you want to showcase or what exactly you think your social media would bring to the table in terms of applying for a job. You know, if you use your social media mostly as a private thing and the artwork on there really is not representative of what you can do, then I wouldn't add it. So again, it's 100% optional, but if you want to add it, you could add a sentence like, if you'd like to learn more about me, you can also find me on Instagram or whatever you use. And finally, the outro. I like to thank the client for checking out the email. I feel like that's polite. So thank you so much for taking the time to read my letter. Hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers, Marie. Of course, feel free to modify this again to whatever style of writing you have. I use cheers at the end of my emails, but of course, feel free to be even more polite and business and, and use something that's less casual or be even more casual. I would not overthink this too much and use whatever fits your personality, because in the end, you also want to bring that across and the people in question will then be able to immediately decide if they are going to vibe with you or not. And if they don't, chances are you wouldn't have enjoyed working with them either. And of course, this goes both ways. You also want to enjoy working with them. I would like to mention a few things to keep in mind after you send out these emails. First, it's not common for clients to reply to you if they're not interested in working with you. They'll just ghost you. That's just how it is. Secondly, don't put your eggs in one basket. Definitely send out a bunch of emails at once. The first time I ever did this, I sent out about seven emails at once and I only heard back from two of the clients. And honestly, that worked out just fine because I ended up building business relationships with those clients and when I was able to show what I did for them in terms of work, I attracted even more clients. So I only ever had to apply once, seven times, to get jobs and ever since then people keep approaching me and offer me jobs. Of course, if I ever get to a point where I don't have any jobs lined up because no one is approaching me, I would definitely go ahead and send out more emails and apply to more jobs. But honestly, I've only ever had to do this once. And my third tip is, if you send out a bunch of emails at once, like seven, eight, nine, ten at a time, and you don't hear back from anyone, honestly, that might just mean that you're not quite there yet. And that's okay. Maybe your art is not where it needs to be to get these jobs. Or maybe your portfolio is just not specialized enough, or you're applying to the wrong companies. There are several reasons why you could not hear back from people, but the most likely would be that maybe you're just not quite there yet. I honestly believe that if this is something you want to do with your life and you're determined and disciplined and passionate enough about it, then you're going to make it work. It just might take you a little bit more time than you expected. It took me 10 years to get to a place where I was able to get jobs with my work and I'm still not where I want to be by far and I still am at a place where I can only get pretty low paying work because honestly my skill is just not there yet and I know this so I keep practicing, I keep working on it and I know that I will get better with time and it's just a matter of time so please don't despair if things are not happening for you right now. They will in the future. I hope this video helped you out just a little bit. I will leave the template of what we just wrote in the email in the description so you can just copy it and use it for your email. And I wish you the best of luck with applying to these jobs. If you have any more questions about this topic or you want me to cover something else, leave it in the comments and I will make sure to answer you to the best of my knowledge. I'm gonna keep uploading videos to this channel whenever I find something out. So if you don't want to miss more info about how to start your freelance career and do this weird thing that we do as illustrators, then please subscribe. <laughs> Why am I always ending these videos on such an awkward note? Bye.